Thank you for your hospitality. I'm going to invite you to uh, find your seats. Let's prepare to worship the Lord together. Heavenly Father, uh, we rejoice in the simple fact that we are here this morning, uh, that you've drawn us to yourself and, and we've come to discover uh, how good it is to gather with your people and worship. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And so with a joyful heart and quick step, he joined those other worshipers and they, they went directly to your temple and they, they worshiped you and enjoyed your presence and the assurance of your faithfulness, the greatness of your grace. And we are, have discovered and are continuing to discover the wonder of worship, of being with you, with others. Lord, let us worship you in spirit and truth. Let our desire be to please you by what we say and do and think and pray and sing and hear and how we respond to the leading of your spirit both this morning and throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand with me, if you will, and join me in the call to worship as we come into God's presence. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all power. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans without power or resources.
Almighty and everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you create us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until we find rest in you. Grant us purity of heart and strength of purpose, that no selfish desire may hinder us from knowing your will, and no weakness from doing it. In your light may we see life clearly, and in your service find perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, the rainstorms of western Pennsylvania are over, but the damage that is done by the flooding and the winds will, be, will take a long time to uh, clean up. Some of our friends have lost their homes and everything uh, that they had, e everything, even their clothes and their trucks and their cars were swept away. Some here today and some of our TV listeners may be living through a silent storm that no one even knows about, or only a few know about. A storm of the mind, of the heart, of the spirit. But in Isaiah we read, you will stand in deep waters, they will not overflow you. You may pass through deep rivers and they will not sweep you away. This song I want to sing for both groups, people in both groups. May it speak to your heart today. In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hid my face While the storms howl above me And there's no hiding place Mid the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over. Till the thunder sounds no more. Till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe. Till the storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, There is no need to try, For there's no end of sorrow, There's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise where the storms never darken the skies. Till the storm passes over, Till the thunder sounds no more, Till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of your hand. Keep me safe. Till the storm passes by. When the long night has ended 
and the storms come no more. Let me stand in thy presence on that bright, peaceful shore. In that land where the tempest never comes, Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. Hold me fast, let me stand in the hollow of thy hand. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, as, as we uh, bow our heads, close our eyes this morning and uh, turn our attention uh, to you, help us to hear as well as to speak. Help us to uh, desire your glory as much as we request your blessing. Help us to desire to, uh, to follow you, uh, to want to know you, to want to serve you as much as, Lord, we ask you to meet the needs of our lives. Speak to our hearts. Make us new and different people this morning. We need that change every day that we wake up. Lord, you have done great things in our past. You have changed us to this point, but we know that you still have work to do in us. So Lord, lead us on that that pilgrim path to purity, to holiness, to, uh, to righteousness that we actually live out day by day, to the strength of character that uh, enables us to know what you want us to do and then to actually do it in our homes, in at work and at school, in all the places where we live our lives, with all the different people we live our lives. Teach us to be, to be kind, uh, to be gentle with other people, to be patient and forgiving, because we're all flawed and we are all going to, from time to time, make somebody else upset. And we need that grace to be, like, to be like you. Grant us love, faithfulness to you and to your call, self-control. Remind us that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of sound mind, self-control, peace. Make us different people this morning, we pray. We want to ask, Lord, your grace on two communities in our country, one in Texas and one in Ohio, that have suffered again from mass shootings, two in our country in less than 24 hours. We hear that 
29 people have lost their lives, many more injured. One of the assailants is, was killed, one is in custody. Lord, we don't understand this ongoing terror. Help us to believe that prayer is part of an effective way to answer it. Not the whole thing. So we pray for uh, families who've lost loved ones. We pray for uh, communities that are hurt. We pray for those in the hospital. We pray for this, um, I guess, young man who in Texas committed these crimes and is now in, in police custody. Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom uh, to know how to intervene before these things happen. To be kind enough to one another that we will recognize those people who are alienated and left out and feel hated and respond with hate. Remind us too, Lord, that human beings are capable of evil. All evil is not because of mental illness. Sometimes we do evil things. And therefore we need a Redeemer. Watch over our first responders. Guide our planners. Help us to find resources for those who do need uh, behavioral health services, not just because they may uh, be dangerous to others, but because, Lord, you want them to be whole. Father, we want to lift before you these uh, whom we've named, uh, that you would bring healing and wholeness to them, meet them in their uh, uh, particular uh, needs. First, Lord, we want to pray for our brothers and sisters. Uh, at St. Stephen's and St. Joseph's uh, uh, Catholic Churches this morning. They're, they've been going through changes, uh, and now another major change is being proposed. Uh, and they need, they need your grace as they think about these things and talk about them. And I don't know how, what their process is for making these decisions, but, uh, Lord, they need your guidance as well. I pray, Lord, that there would be a spirit of understanding within the congregation that um, people wouldn't simply react negatively but would appreciate the time and service and effort of those who have offered this plan and recognize that their desire is to serve uh, the Roman Catholic community uh, the best they know how. Pray for um, priests in our community. They will have uh, a specific task before them. We ask your grace upon them. We pray for, for Rhonda, Dick, Rose, Christopher, for Faith, for Rebecca, for Pat. They have different needs for healing, but you know those needs and we lift them before you. Lord, we pray for DeAndre and for David who are receiving the soldier boxes this morning. Bless them and keep them. Bless their, home, their homes and their families, we pray. And speak to our hearts. And hear our praise and thanksgiving for your love and your grace and your mercy, your faithfulness to us. We pray together in the name of Jesus, sing as he taught us to pray.
Will the ushers please come forward at this time to gather our tithes and our offerings? My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward. This troubled world is not my final home. And until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city, until the day God calls me home. This weary world with all its toil and struggle may take its toll of misery and strife. The soul of man is like a waiting falcon when it's released it's destined for the skies. And until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city until the day God calls me home. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the pleasures and joys you have provided for us. We welcome you into our homes. We appreciate your guidance. Please accept these, our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to ask you to find uh, two passages of Scripture in your, in your Bible this morning. Um, I'm going to read 2 Samuel uh, chapter 21 uh, first. So find uh, that passage, 2 Samuel 21, 15 through 17, on page 508 in the Pew Bible. And then when you have that located, find Isaiah 45. 22 to 25, and then it says 26, but we're going to read Isaiah 46, 3 through 5. I hope that doesn't cause the TV guys too much stress. So let's give our attention to God's Word, beginning 2 Samuel uh, chapter 21, verse 15. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines, and he became exhausted. And Ishbi Benob, one of the descendants of Repha, whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 shekels, and who was armed with a new sword, said he would kill David. But Abishai, son of Zeruiah, came to David's rescue. He struck the Philistine down and killed him. And then David's men swore to him, saying, Never again will you go out with us to battle, so that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. And then from Isaiah chapter 45, beginning at verse 22. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow, by me every tongue will swear. They will say of me, in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. All who have raged against him will come to him and be put to shame. But in the Lord all the descendants of Israel will be found righteous and, exalt, and will exalt. And then, beginning at chapter 46, verse 3. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all you who remain of the house of Israel, you who I have upheld since you were conceived and have carried since you were born. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, thank you for those, those good words that you, you watch over us. From the moment of a conception, you carry us the days of our lives, and even in age, you sustain us and rescue us. Lord, I pray that your people this morning, myself included, would have a greater sense of your faithfulness throughout every stage of life, and that we would, uh, in that confidence, uh, walk more closely with you. In Jesus' name, amen. There were uh, three sisters, um, ages 92, 94, 96, who lived together, all in one house. One night, the 96-year-old uh, was upstairs, drew a bath, and she put her foot in the water and paused. And then she yelled to her sisters, was I getting in or out of the bath? Well, the 94-year-old yelled back, I don't know. I'll come up and see. And so she started up the stairs and paused. And then she yelled, was I going up the stairs or coming down? 
The 92-year-old was sitting at the kitchen table having some tea and listening to her sisters, and she shook her head and said, I sure hope I never get that forgetful. And for good measure, she knocked wood. And then she yelled, I'll come up and help you both as soon as I see who's at the door. Some of you can appreciate uh, that kind of story. Have you ever gone into a room and uh, stood there and said to yourself, why did I come in here? You don't have to be 96 to do that. You just have to be a little bit overloaded. Isaiah says, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. You know, every, every stage of life has its um, peculiar challenges and it's probably its peculiar temptations. Not that they don't span most of life, but that sometimes they seem to concentrate. If, you're, uh, if we were to talk about it, we could make a list of the, of the challenges and temptations of being a teen and a young adult, couldn't we? Wouldn't it be too hard to to talk about um, sexuality and drugs and uh, self-destructive, uh, dangerous behavior. Um, we wouldn't want to admit that when we were teenagers and young adults, we faced those same kind of temptations, uh, but it was, it's true. Um, maybe the drugs are different, but when I was a kid, they were available, I'll tell you. And there's always been booze, so if you couldn't find other stuff, there was plenty of stuff to get in trouble with, right? Remember those days? By the time you get to be 30 and 40, maybe some of those things have fallen away. Maybe the challenges start to be, um, you know, how do you find your place in the world? How do you express success where you are in your career in your family? Are your plans, uh, what you expected out of life, are they being met? And you might, you might push yourself a little harder to, to win and then neglect some other things. Or maybe the challenge is, um, temptation is around the, uh, the ongoing inescapable responsibilities of work, family, a spouse, and the temptation is to escape one way or another and find some adventure and freedom someplace. And get to be older, uh, some people just become angry and rude, uh, and they say, uh, well, I earned the right. I never knew that the passage of time uh, gave anybody the right to be angry or rude. Um, Maybe we also uh, face some challenges because, um, uh, well, because we're changing. Um, maybe we worry about, will my, will my money last? Will my health last? Will I be alone? There are uh, challenges in every stage of life and feelings uh, and challenges are not by themselves temptations, are they? But the way that we face and deal with those challenges can be an opportunity either to be faithful in a new situation or to stumble. And, and the thing about every stage of life is you don't have any practice dealing with the stuff you just got into. Just about the time you get the last one figured out, there's another one to start. And it's different. And the things that bug you now, uh, that might draw you away, maybe you don't even recognize because they weren't what you dealt with before. Someone said, age is when life stops giving and starts taking. And so... Loved ones become ill, friends and family pass away, people stop driving and they become isolated. Don't go to Florida anymore, it's too hard. All those things just kind of slip 
out of our fingers. The challenges of every stage of life are also challenges of faith, challenges to faith, and challenges for us to figure out how to deal with through faith. Um, we have to figure out in each stage of life how God is going to be faithful to us and how we can be faithful to Him in return. And again, I want to remind you what Isaiah said. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am He. I am He who will sustain you, who will carry you, who will rescue you. Um, if you're not old yet, um, and you, you can figure out what that means, but if you're not old yet, uh, you may be thinking, this would have been a great Sunday to stay in bed and skip because the preacher's going to talk to all those old geezers, right? But there's something in here for all of us. Uh, even if you aren't old yet, just remember that as you were, I was. And as I am, if you make it, you will one day be. So it's not like we're going to escape this somehow. I want you to notice from the, from the story that we read in um, uh, 2 Samuel, this happens... Um, this happens late in David's reign as king, later in his life. Uh, this is a story about age. And in it, David experiences the challenges of growing age and the limits that, that come on us as, as we do age. And, and if you were listening to the story and you, and you were able to follow it, uh, the, 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 the writer just simply says, well, another war came up, and that was constant between, um, between Israel and, and uh, its neighbors, and David went out with his army. Now, we met David a long time ago, and one of the first stories that you remember of David is David and Goliath, right? He's a kid, we don't know exactly how old, maybe early to mid-teens. He's a young guy. Uh, he's, not a, he's not a trained warrior, he's a shepherd. And, and he's on a mission from his dad. He goes to take some food uh, to his brothers and some gifts to their commander. And he happens to arrive uh, when Goliath is on the field. And, and you know the rest of the story. David, even though he's young, faces this, this giant who is a big man who has been a warrior since his youth, who has strength and experience well outmatching David. And David takes his sling and hurls a rock and hits him in the head, and the guy goes down, and the victory is hid. And you remember how David uh, speaks about that encounter. He says, um, you come against me, with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And David doesn't come to him with strength. He's just a kid. He doesn't pretend that he can stand. He says, I'm coming. You come to me with all of the strength of the natural world. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord Almighty. There's his strength. And if you've, if you've read uh, the stories of David, you know that that, that kind of, uh, um, he's an active and, and uh, a busy person all of his life. He's a warrior all of his life. And a lot of the stories that we read are him facing dangers, um, either from uh, King Saul who's chasing him around or the enemies who surround uh, Israel. Um, he faces them all with some measure of courage and a great measure of success. And when David eventually becomes king, he uh, picks up the, uh, the, the task of defending his country, defending Israel, and he turns against the nations all around him who have been uh, overwhelming them from every side. And so he, he defeats the Philistines on the west, he defeats Moab on the east, he defeats the Syrians on the north, 
and, and establishes a period of, of uh, remarkable peace for his, pe for his people for a period of time. That's the life of David, a strong leader, a warrior, a man who is experienced with going out in the face of danger and facing it. Now, did you remember what we read in this story? Another war comes up. They go out to fight with the Philistines. David goes with the army like he always does. And then the guy just writes in this one little free phrase, and David became exhausted. Did you hear that, David? Here's the guy who has stood in the, in the center of battle for how many years, and now he's come to the place in this, he is spent. He can't pick up his shield or swing his sword. He cannot make a, a, an orderly retreat. He can't even run for his life. He's done. Why? He's old. He's old. He's got some gray in his beard. His hairline is receding. He's old. And in that moment of weakness, one of the champions of the Philistines sees the opportunity, and, and he sees that David, this is the guy who has poured so much defeat upon the Philistines, and Ishbi Benob says, I'm going to get him. Here's another giant. Now, he's not quite as big as Goliath, but he falls in the same category. He carries a spear uh, whose, the spearhead weighs, was it, 300 shekels, seven and a half pounds. That's a pretty top-heavy spear. This guy's big. Now, here's an interesting story. When David was a kid, he faced a Goliath, and he's the one who slung the stone. Now David is old, he faces a giant, and David is spent. Isn't that a strange turn of life? And one of David's bodyguards, who serves him personally, um, what was his name, Ajuera, something like that, uh, steps into the breach, he faces Ishbi ben, ben Ab, and he kills the enemy. And then, when the battle is over, the army gets together and they say to David, this is the last time. You are not coming with us to fight anymore. You're too old. Your, your bones creak. We're not taking you with us anymore because you are a risk to yourself and to everybody else. You stay home. You're too old. David didn't have the strength to defend himself against this Ishbi Benob. Uh, but at the same time, David didn't have the strength to defeat Goliath either, did he? So why didn't the Lord uh, give David another supernatural victory? Why didn't, why didn't the Lord step in and and kind of beef him up for just a moment to face this giant. He could have done that. He didn't. Does that mean that the Lord is not being faithful to his servant? Does that mean that uh, he's abandoned David in the moment that he needs him most? You see... In our minds, we, would, we answer those questions and say, well, no, 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 God, isn't, God would never do that. But here's this story. I, isn't it kind of similar? Now, we're not facing uh, literal giants who are carrying spears and swinging swords, but haven't you, as you've gotten a little bit older, found that some of the stuff you did before you can't do anymore? And sometimes don't you ask, where's the Lord in that? How's God faithful in my changing? Maybe, maybe I haven't changed that much now. I can still do a lot of stuff. But I, maybe I'm not as strong. I don't have as much endurance. Maybe I'm fatter. Um, but I, 
But I look down the road a few more years, and maybe not so much in the future. Used to be, I went to the doctor, and you could count the visits by the times in the year, twice a year, maybe three. Now, I go to the doctor, you count the number of visits in a month. Are you like that? Or are you up to the number of visits in a week? Or have you completely forgotten the names of your doctors because you have so many of them, you can't keep track of them anymore? You've got to write them on a piece of paper saying, remember, it's Tuesday, I must be going to see Dr. Smith, right? The question is, how do we understand faithfulness of God in that setting? David had to uh, learn to rely on God in a new way, a different way, in a different circumstance. God is not unfaithful. David had to learn to rely on his faithfulness expressed in different ways, in different circumstances. And so here the Lord gave strength to another man. And David found that God was still faithful, but God's strength was working through the arms, through arms other than his own. Is he less faithful? Is he working different? Um, the passage that we read from Isaiah, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I am he who made you. I am he who carry you. I will sustain you. I will rescue you. And this passage talks about stages of life. It just doesn't speak to old people. It speaks to all of us. Um, let me go back or go forward. Where did it go? There it is. That's not it. There it is. This is uh, verse 3. Uh, Isaiah writes, I have upheld you since you were conceived. Obviously, that's early. And have carried you since your birth. That covers the span of growth from childhood to to. Uh, adolescence to adulthood to he's he's the one who's been there at every stage and now the question is what is he doing when we're old he's still the same and he puts these ter this in terms of of, uh, of a covenant faithfulness uh, this is about us trusting the Lord and and he says turn to me and be saved all you ends of the earth for I am God and there is no other. Uh, trusting uh, in new situations is not easy. It calls for us to do something in our lives that um, is different. Uh, sometimes we have to lay aside things that we really felt were avenues of serving God, but now, for whatever reason, we're not really up to that anymore. Does that mean that God isn't faithful? Uh, no, it means that trusting has changed. Even when you're in old age, gray hair, even when you're a teenager, you're middle-aged. He's the one who says, I'm going to carry you. I'm going to sustain you. What are your struggles right now? I'm not abandoning you. So, this is a call to our heart. This is a call to our understanding of who God is, how God is going to relate to us in the changing pattern of our lives. And so we've got to retrain how our mind works, because our faith is translated by our mind, how we understand it, and how we're going to live it. So we need to do a couple things. We, first of all, we've got to embrace this, this idea that God is with us every stage of life. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he who will sustain you. 
at every stage. I was with you when you were conceived. I carried you uh, since your birth, even to your old age. I'm the one. Got to embrace it. I mean, it's taken some, uh, some time, some effort to think about that passage. Is that true? Uh, to work it into our heart, to memorize that verse, and then to look at the passage, the bigger passage, and see how uh, the Lord is speaking to us right there. We got to remember it. How is it that God has been faithful in your past up to your present? Those things, he may not act the same way, but he's still the same God. In new circumstances, he will be just as faithful. Now, you have to look for some changes, but remember who he is and what he's done. So then start expecting it. Look for God to be at work in your present and your future. I think David was looking for that. And maybe in the, on that battlefield, he said, here comes that giant. I've done this before. And he tried to stand up, and he got about halfway and slumped back down. And in his own head, he said, what's going on? What's wrong with me? And he looked up and said, oh, boy, that guy's getting closer. What am I going to do? God wasn't working the way he had. But God did work. God did work. So we've got to expect it. Not necessarily it's going to look like we, it like did in the past. Not like it, it's going to look like we want it to be. David would much rather have stood up, knocked the guy on the head himself. But God is faithful. And then to discover God to discover him right in that situation. To see how God is faithful. To notice what he's doing. To celebrate the fact that he is sustaining you at every stage of life. They say that age is not for sissies. But I want to say to you, there is no stage of life that, has, that is meant to be handled without the grace and power, faithfulness of God. I don't care if you're a sissy or not. Wherever you are, you need the faithful one. So reach out to him. Embrace him. Remember him. Expect him to be at work. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, it's hard for us in the, in the passages of life to find you. And it's particularly hard when there's an ongoing struggle that doesn't seem to resolve. And that is part of what happens when we get older. So open our eyes to who you really are. I am God, there is no other. And I am he who will sustain you. And let us live in that assurance. Amen.
Lean on His grace, His strength, His faithfulness. It may not always feel good, but He always is. Go forth in His grace and peace. Amen.